I've done a lot of off-roading, but I've never done it on a road, at least not a paved road, and certainly not on a highway. This past weekend, I headed up to the Bonneville Salt Flats to watch the land speed cars go fast. Unfortunately, the event was canceled due to rain. But that wasn't the only place that got rain. Death Valley also got rain. In fact, they got a whole year's worth of rain in three hours. This led to rock slides, mud slides, and rivers that obscured or obliterated dozens of miles of roads and left a thousand people stranded. This all had started earlier in the week, but I didn't hear about it because I get all my news from memes and car blogs. I'm not exactly what you would call plugged in. So it was a bit of a surprise to me when I decided to take the scenic route through Death Valley and came across this. I was driving from here to here. This is the direct way, but this way is much more scenic and only adds 30 minutes to the drive. Well, it normally adds 30 minutes. Heading into the park, everything was great. Our dashboard companion was indicating a smooth ride. As we started approaching the park, we could see rocks had slid into the road a little bit here and there, and some areas worse than others, but soon we came across this. This was the route we were planning on taking through the park. Normally it's a comfortable drive, maybe a bit hot, but usually as flat as a well-paved highway, with excellent scenery. There were scattered rocks in this area, but by the time we got here, the road had been swallowed by rocks and dirt. In the satellite images, you can see where the rain normally runs off, and this road mostly follows the valley. We chatted with some people who had gone in a bit further and turned around. Apparently the conditions got worse a few miles up the road, but my vehicle is kind of made for this sort of thing, so we pressed on. I should note here that we did not come across any road closed signs, nor any indication that the road was impassable, except, you know, the road. Even Google Maps didn't say anything about it. As we descended into the clouds, the road was patchy, but not terrible. I wouldn't take a Nissan Altima down here, but so far so good for the Forerunner. Until we got about here, and then things started to get bumpy. We came across a group of Italian tourists standing outside their car, stuck in the mud. We pulled out the winch and dragged them out. They had been stranded for a while, and they were very happy to be free. They turned around and headed out of the park just as we were passed by a guy on a Harley determined to make it through. Not the right bike for this buddy, but you do you. He did not look like he was having a very good time and he was in for a lot more struggle because the road got worse and it didn't let up for a few miles. Eventually it did smooth out a bit and just as we thought we were in the clear, we came across a river where there is not supposed to be a river. Driving across flowing water is normally a very bad idea, but I have crossed rivers in this thing, none quite as wide as this, but I decided to roll up my pants and see how bad it was. It actually wasn't. I wouldn't take a Nissan Altima across it, but the road was intact, the flow was manageable, and we had already made it this far, so I decided to give it a shot. It was fine. The only thing I was worried about were the sandbars under the water in a couple of spots. I got my front tires on one and felt out the traction. Everything was good. We got some encouragement on the other side from a motorcyclist. He, smartly, decided not to try and cross. There was a German family and a rental forerunner following us. They were feeling adventurous. I showed the dad how to switch it to four low and turn on a track. The wife and kids walked across the river and I turned my truck around just in case the other forerunner got stuck and needed a tow through the sand. But he got across just fine. This is probably prohibited in the rental car terms of service, but I'm not going to say anything. If you don't say anything, we're all good. We came across a French guy driving way too fast over the rocks on all-season tires. I'm not sure why all of Europe was in Death Valley this past weekend, but I told him about the road conditions, suggested he turn around, and also that he might be driving a bit too fast over the rocks. He didn't seem too concerned and carried on. Fine with me. I'm not the cops. I just hope he brought some water. We made it past the lowest point and were heading up the east side, hoping it was easier than the west side of the park. We came across another stranded European. He was driving a Nissan Altima, perhaps the worst vehicle to be driving in these conditions. He had been stranded there for three hours, high centered on a big rock. We took out the winch again and pulled him out, successfully liberating another German. He turned around to go back out the way he came in, but a few hundred yards down the road, there was no road. The Forerunner could have crawled down this washout and up the other side, but the Nissan Altima definitely could not, so we went back, found a wash on the side of the road, and told our new friend to follow us. After that, it was rough for a few more miles, but the worst was over. We stopped to chat with a few people heading into the park and convinced them all to turn around. Most of them were European, I don't know why, but I can confidently say that we saved the entire European continent. It was about this time that I realized we never paid our park admission fee. Sorry, National Park Service. We'll get you next time. Oh, and remember how I said we didn't see any road closed signs? Well, we actually saw one facing the other direction as we exited the park.
We made it through, but I very much do not recommend it. If I would have known how bad it was, I would not have tried it. Death Valley in August is deadly hot. If we had broken down, we would have been two more people in need of saving in addition to the thousand already stranded. But we made it, and along the way we helped a dozen people. Maybe I should start an off-road towing business and a YouTube channel. I could call it Matt's Off-Road Recovery. Oh, that's already taken? Well, never mind then.